everyone, another story today at Cindy Harper Speaks. And this one, I think we're going to have a good time with it. It's called Upstate Autumn. It's by Jed Manheimer, and it's illustrated by Mark Elliott. So she's sitting at her computer. Mm, she looks a little bit sad to me. Melissa and her dad use email to keep in touch. Interesting. As you read, evaluate how Melissa adjusts to her new life. So she and her dad keep in touch via email. He must be away. September 2, dad at worldwork.edu. Hey, how have you been? I just set up my new computer. It isn't as cool as yours, but at least it works. Mom is reading right now. She doesn't seem homesick for the city at all. She seems happy with her new job at the college library. I'm not happy with anything except how pretty it is up here. You know, we're right on the lake, but I miss you and my friends. I'm worried about starting school tomorrow. I won't know anyone. Email me soon. Love, Melissa. To Melissa at eduplace2.com. Hi, sweetie. Loved your email. Don't worry. I'm sure school will be better than you expect. If I know my girl, you'll have a flock of friends in no time. What's your teacher like? I just got email at home. I needed a separate address for my personal email. Now it will be easier to stay in touch with you. To dad. Who is new email? Dad123 at eduplace.com. My teacher is Ms. Lovejoy. She's okay, but she always goes on and on about outside reading. She wants us to spend all our free time in the library. Maybe if they had computers in the library, I wouldn't mind going. Actually, maybe you could talk to the librarian, Mr. Smiths, about that. He seems pretty nice. Hey, maybe your company could sell computers to the school at a discount, and then I'd have something to do when I go to the library. Love, Melissa. To Melissa. Sweetie, I'll talk to your Mr. Smiths about computers anytime you'd like. I'm not sure about the discount, but do give him my work phone number. And by the way, there's nothing wrong with outside reading, my darling daughter, or inside reading for that matter, to dad. Your jokes are so lame. Love you anyway, Melissa. October, to dad. News of the day, mom and I actually did something fun. When mom picked me up at the bus stop, she had a brand new pair of ice skates for me. She said the lake will freeze soon. It's not even Halloween yet, but we are pretty far north. Then we went down to the lake. Nobody was there except for the duck family. Did I tell you about them? They are so beautiful. The male has a brown chest, green head, and red eyes. Mom told me they are wood ducks. I ended up watching them all afternoon. Mom took some pictures. I think I'll surf the net tonight and find out more about them. And just to be fair to books, tomorrow I'll look in the library for what they have. I'll, it'll give me something to do when the kids in my class are ignoring me. Love, Melissa. To Melissa. Mel, Mel, give those kids another week or so. They're just getting used to having such a gorgeous, smart, and sassy girl in their class. I know what you're thinking. He's just saying that because he's my dad. Honey, I can assure you that I am 100% objective. To dad, Columbus Day was fun in the morning. Mom took me to the library where she works. And then in the afternoon, we went skating at the rink with my new friend, Katie, and her mom. When the lake freezes good and hard, the four of us will be out there slipping and sliding. Sad to say the ducks won't be around to watch us. They fly south for the winter. Mom says they'll be back next spring. Love, Melissa. To Melissa. Mel, I can't wait to see you in your new skates. We'll skate at Rockefeller Center when you come in for winter break. Mr. Smith called me at the office today. He asked me for advice about buying computers for your school. He says they will have the money for a dozen terminals right after winter break. So when I drive you home after vacation, I'll meet with him, the principal, and a couple of teachers. Does that make you happy? To dad. You know that makes me happy. Thanks, dad. 
Now you're not going to believe this. Mom is just as bad as Ms. Lovejoy. She thinks I should stay at the library after school to do homework. She says that I'm staying up too late getting all my homework done. You know how mom talks. You're losing vital sleep and energy. So from now on, she's going to pick me up at the school library instead of the bus stop. And to make matters worse, we're going to have fish for dinner tonight. I guess she doesn't like fish. To Melissa, not much time to write. Sorry about the fish, shrimp. Do you do what your mom asked? She actually has your best interests at heart, even though it may not seem so to you at times. To dad, please don't call me shrimp. I've grown at least two inches since I saw you. To dad, at first I thought Mr. Smith was kind of slow because he didn't know where the computer books were. It turns out that he's not. He's just totally focused on science fiction, but he likes to talk about some other stuff like nature. He told me that swans stay married for life. Did you know that? So it's not so bad in the library after school if he's around. Besides, it's a good place for me, Katie, and our friend Tricia to hang out until our moms pick us up. To dad. Mr. Smits is having us do volunteer work now. It's fun. All we do is put the return books on the shelves and listen to Mr. Smits talk. He tells us about all these weird books that he wants us to read. I told him I don't like science fiction, especially books about computers and robots taking over the world. I think computers and robots will help save the world, don't you? Why haven't you been answering my emails lately? Love, Melissa. November. To Melissa. I'm sorry that I've been out of touch, Mel. I've been swamped with work and have stayed late at the office almost every night this week. You sound like you're doing great. Mr. Smith seems like an interesting guy. I'm looking forward to meeting him. I saw your old buddy Kendra the other day. She told me to say hi and that she'd see you during winter break. Your ever loving dad. To dad. Mr. Smith says hi. He showed me how to find stuff in the card catalog. I promised I would teach him how to locate books online when we finally get computers. He likes deals like that. I told mom how nice Mr. Smith is. I think she's going to invite him over for dinner. I just hope she doesn't make the poor guy eat fish. Love, Mel. To dad. Dinner with Mr. Smith was okay. We didn't have fish. We had pizza, my favorite. He and mom didn't talk about librarian stuff, but that would have been boring anyway. Then I had a nightmare that Mr. Smith was my stepfather. I would never want him to replace you. I don't think mom would want him to either. When I told mom about it, she laughed, but then she said it would be a bad idea to tell Mr. Smith about it. To Melissa, your dream sounds disturbing. I can understand how something like that can be scary, but you know that no matter what happens, I'll be here and you will always have a place in the city. Take it easy and watch out for the fish bones. Much love, Bob. To dad, Ms. Lovejoy says we have to write a three-page book report. It's due after Thanksgiving vacation. It's totally not fair. I know for a fact that they only have to write one-page reports at my old school. I guess I could write about ducks, but Ms. Lovejoy says she wants it to be about a book we haven't yet read. And I've read every duck book in upstate New York. Do you have any ideas? <clears throat> to Melissa. I'm chock full of ideas, my dear, but I don't know much about books for hmm, fourth graders or fifth graders. Ask your Mr. Smith and see what he suggests. Just be sure to say in your most polite voice, no science fiction, please. Love, Dad. To Dad. I told Mr. Smith, Mr. Smith about how we email all the time, and it reminded him of a, of a book he thought I'd like, and I do. It's about some boy who writes letters to his favorite author, so I finally have something for my book report to dad. The book report turned out to be fun, believe it or not. The book Mr. Smith recommended was awesome, and the report was a snap to write. Work sure is easier when you like what you're doing. I miss you even more than when I first moved here. I want to know what we're going to do when I visit. There are so many things I want to do. Can we see a musical? I'd like to take a walk around the city and look at the holiday windows and then see all my friends and grandma. But mostly, I want to hang around with you. Love, Melissa. December to Melissa. I promise that you and I will be a twinkling twosome. 
We can see a musical maybe with grandma. I'll be happy to take you and Kendra around town as we look at the holiday windows. And how about the Bronx Zoo? So you can show me those wood ducks you've been talking about. To dad, I can't wait to see you. Love, Melissa. To Melissa, ditto, kiddo. How does Melissa feel about her new life? She misses her friend, she misses her dad, and she's scared about going to the new school. Why do you think computers are so important to Melissa? Because that's how she and her dad communicate with each other. What clues in the story help you understand why Melissa's dad thinks she's doing great? Because he tells her and he knows she's a good student and he tells her she's doing great. And with all of the things he shares with her, he knows from what she shares. How does Melissa feel about books at the beginning of the story? She doesn't like to read. Describe how her attitude changes and why. Her attitude changes when she finds books about things she likes, then her attitude changes because she liked reading the books about ducks and then she liked reading the book that Mr. Smith recommended for her. So when you read, if you read something that you like, then it's far more interesting. So if you like Upstate Autumn, press like at the end and I'll see you next time at Cindy Harper Speaks. Thanks for tuning in today. Bye for now.